Greetings from my home to yours. Welcome to our service today. It is good to be with you and together like this. Friends, we are reminded that it is through the Spirit that we are joined together, even though we are apart. Listen to these words as they draw us into this time of worship. The foolish say, there is no God. We are alone, on our own. We gather to declare the glory of God in our lives. The foolish say, it is your life. You are accountable to no one. We gather, strengthened by the Spirit, trusting that Christ dwells in our hearts. The foolish say, everything I have is mine. I owe nothing to anyone. We gather to praise the one who calls us to serve others in love. Friends, let us bow our heads as we open this time together in a word of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, whose holiness is not only limited to grand cathedrals or saintly persons, spectacular mountains or mountain-moving leaders, O oh God, whose holiness is often discovered in simple everyday places and simple everyday folk. Plant your holiness in this place and with us now. Grow us this hour that we might flower right where we are with the beauty of your holiness. Listen to these words as they call us to make confession. Jesus invites us to be honest with ourselves and with each other. Let us pause now to examine our hearts and confess our sins to God. God of mercy, our need is great. The pandemic has left us tired, anxious and uncertain. We have stretched beyond our limits and numbed ourselves to our pain. We have accepted getting by as good enough. We have rejected your offers of spiritual food as unrealistic and impractical. Help us, holy God, to acknowledge and confess our need. Help us to embrace your command for Sabbath rest. Help us to care for ourselves so that we can continue to care for others. Listen to the assurance of pardon. Jesus invites the thirsty to drink from his well. Jesus invites the hungry to dine at his table. In Christ, we are forgiven. We are filled. We are made whole. Let us hear, accept, and embody his good news, both now and always. Amen. Friends, as we gather together, we're going to sing Waymaker as our first song of worship today. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
deeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are Oh, you are You are here, touching every heart I worship you I worship you I worship you Friends, our scripture readings this morning, the first of those comes from the psalm, psalm number 13. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken, but I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, and I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through until the end of 52. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy, Jesus, stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to him. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. May God bless the hearing of his word to us today. Eighteen months down the line, and no one could have ever imagined that we would be still living this half-life of social distancing, sheltering, 
and not being able to worship like we used to. On the Church of Scotland's Facebook page, they were outlining the new level of restrictions. And of course, they were easing and opening up the United Kingdom, as many of their people have had their vaccine. People were commenting on this post, excited about the prospect of going back to church, of singing and worshipping together. My heart ached to think that we are still some time away from that. This time has not only been disruptive, but it has been lonely. Each of us would have experienced this time differently, not being able to participate in the usual rhythms of worship and community for some, it has been detrimental, not only to our health, our wealth and emotional stability, but our spiritual well-being. So I want to ask you today to pause for a moment and to consider your relationship with the Lord, your prayer time and general spiritual position right now, in this moment. For some, it will signal a time of deepening spiritual practice, as perhaps you have had more time to spend in the Word of God or in prayer, or perhaps learn to worship meaningfully at home. But for many, I imagine this is not the case. For many, God feels far away, distant and out of reach. Listen to these words taken from the book in the Old Testament of Job. He says, But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. And when he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. These words tell us a little bit about Job's position and relationship with God and the distance that he experiences from God during his time of affliction. Job is in a really tough spot. He not only feels that God is distant, but perhaps even that God has turned his back on him. Job has also experienced a loss like no other. His children were all killed, along with his servants and his livestock. Job also gets sores all over his body. The book of Job always felt exaggerated and over the top. I mean, who could really experience so much loss in such a short time? But in our current circumstances, that experience feels more real and possibly possible more than ever before. The psalmist that we read from this morning says a similar sentiment. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? Perhaps these words resonate deep within us and bring comfort that we are not alone in our distance and perceived separation from God. St. John of the Cross describes the experienced distance from God as a dark night of the soul. Martin Luther described it as the scandal of God's hiddenness. And Barbara Brown Taylor in her book, Learning to Walk in the Dark, says this, no one chooses the dark night. The dark night descends. For generations, faithful believers have experienced the long dark night where the felt presence of God seems to be gone and the only thing left is an emptiness, a void of what used to be. Often, 
when we have an awareness of this distance or dark night, we have all sorts of reactions to attempt to remedy it. Some panic and begin a frantic search in all kinds of places, desperately seeking God. We go into overdrive and are willing to try all sorts of things. Perhaps even we force meaning into places or people. Some will immediately feel shame and look for the sin in their lives that must have brought on this darkness, like Job's friends suggest. Such shame perhaps will keep us from reaching out to others, so we go it alone, or worse still, we abandon our faith altogether. Others will freeze up and become incapacitated with no resources or ideas of what could be done or what the next step could be, and eventually, in the frustration of it all, will quit the whole thing. A.J. Saboda wrote a book called The Dusty Ones, where he shares a similar situation involving a good friend of his from high school. A.J. had a friend called Stu, and Stu came to faith in Jesus through AJ and their shared friendship. They were zealous and excited about their faith. They read their Bibles together and prayed in front of their lockers. The friends lost touch after they graduated, as often happens. But some 10 years later, they reconnected. And AJ discovered that Stu no, long, no longer called himself a Christian. Stu said that when he went off to college, he stopped feeling the presence of God. A.J. Saboda, in his book, points his readers to a time when Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, lost Jesus as a young boy. Although the scripture isn't exactly about people losing the felt presence of God, AJ makes some beautiful suggestions for those of us who find ourselves in a dark night and a distance from God. Mary and Joseph, Jesus, and the extended family and friends and possibly the whole community are traveling back from Jerusalem after attending the festival of the Passover. Mary and Joseph travel a whole day before they discover that Jesus isn't with them. They have lost Jesus. The first thing that Jesus' parents do is look for him among those who know him and know what he looked like. Those who could recognize him, the extended family, friends and community. Community becomes so important during these times of darkness because we can be encouraged and reminded by those who know him too. Who can we find that knows what Jesus looks like that can point us in the right direction? Friends, can we position ourselves in a place where we can see others who know Jesus and witness their rhythms of life. Perhaps being present with them will help us hear a song or find a scripture that is meaningful or a rhythm that could set us back on track. Of course, during this time of the pandemic and churches being closed, this is more challenging and difficult. But I want to encourage you to try and reach out to friends or family or me on the phone, on WhatsApp or email so that we too might help one another find Jesus in the dark night. The second thing that Mary and Joseph did is that they went back to the place where they saw him last. They went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Sometimes it can be helpful to retrace our steps and go back to where we last 
saw Jesus or God and felt his presence? Was there a particular hymn or rhythm or practice or community or scripture or friend where you last experienced him? Perhaps returning to there, those places could help us find God's presence once again. This, of course, is not always possible. Sometimes moving away or a person that had helped us to feel God's presence is no longer with us. But I want to encourage you not to give up and to keep your eyes peeled, perhaps for the new thing that God is doing and introducing us to. Lastly, Mary and Joseph don't lose hope. They lose Jesus for three whole days. A day, a sunset, a long night, a sunrise, a day, a sunset, a long night, another sunrise, another day, another sunset, another long night, and finally a sunrise. Now three days doesn't sound like a long time for the night of the soul, but it is an eternity for parents who have lost a child. Mary and Joseph do not give up. They keep looking until they find him. A dark night of the soul can mean a time of growth for us. And while we feel trapped in the darkness and feel out of control, and that it may seem to take forever for us to see new life, to see the new sprouting green leaf. But God is always faithful to us. If you find yourself in the dark night, know this. Even though you feel that God is not near you, he has promised us time and again in his word that he would never leave or forsake us. We are loved, we are held, and we're never out of God's sight. Listen to these words from scripture. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 says, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And finally, from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8, it reads, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Friends, take heart in these promises of God's word that we may feel out of his presence, but that we're always in his sight. Solo Dei Gloria. Amen. Friends, let us sing the famous hymn, O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Let us worship.
Friends, in response to God's word today, we listen to these words as they call forth the offering. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. God, open our hands and our hearts as we return our tithes and our offerings to you. Come, let us bow our heads as we offer up our prayers of dedication. God of provision, gather these offerings and bless them so that all may be satisfied, all the hungry may be fed, and nothing is lost and no one is left behind. For we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, the Lord calls us to remember others when we pray, to remember those who are facing difficult times or circumstances, those who are in times of need or loneliness, and so we take this opportunity to pray our prayers for the people and for the world. Let us pray. Holy God, how can suffering come to an end? How can pain ease, grief ebb, hunger be sat satisfied, weapons laid down, anxiety calmed, corruption fought, Division overcome. Your promises to provide the path of hope you lay out, Holy God, seem impossible under the weight of our woes. Yet we pause to pray. We turn to you, speak to you, shorten the distance between us and you in the hope and the faith that you listen when your people pray. You love you weep, you act. Grateful for your ear, holy God, we lift up our prayers to you. May those in need of healing experience the balm of your nurturing care. May those in need of courage find inspiration in the heroes and heroines of your written word. May those in need of reconciliation Find empowerment in your path of peace. May those in need of guidance be blessed with your insight and wisdom. Eternal God, who blesses all of life, bless and renew us all. Time moves so fast, life always ahead of us, urging us faster and faster. May this moment of prayer and pause Help us to hear the wind paging through the trees. Feel the hug of the sunshine. See the stars flaring. And to smell the flowers across the street. May this moment of shared community help us to remember the support and sustenance we have here with each other and with you. United as a family of faith and as the body of Christ, we lift these prayers to you, God our Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Finally, hear us as we pray together the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, we pray that you have been blessed, strengthened, and inspired in the time that we've spent together and that you would go forth into the week with courage, love, and kindness. Listen to these words as they bless and part us. May the steadfast love of God, the abundant grace of Jesus Christ, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.
Oh. Uh-huh.